Hey guys, so since I got this computer stuff working, um, I figured I would uh, uh, play around with some um, uh, 809833 stuff uh, that I've been uh, meaning to play around with, just, just getting around to it. Um, so um, I got some code that I started to write this and I said, you know what, let me just you know throw it in Google and see if anybody's already done this. Um, and um, I came across uh, this up at GitHub from uh, uh, Thomas. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce Thomas Nyland. Hope I'm not butchering the guy's name. Sorry, sorry, fella. Um, and he pretty much already did virtually, uh, you know, 99% of the work here. So um, I just, you know, took his and, uh, you know, threw it. Uh, you know, through through some most of it, most of uh, you know, this is all his stuff here. You know, from the uh, uh, basically, I just uh, cannibalized his spy to, uh, sp the the spy uh, comms and his eighty nine eight three three functions. Uh, you know, and threw them uh, threw them in a main and moved on with life, pretty much. So um, you know, he's uh, he's got a little bit more elaborate thing going on there he's using a different uh, microcontroller um, and he's doing some uh, serial over USB with it so uh, he can he can talk to it and he can set it via um, USB actually not uh, quite cool but uh, you know a little bit uh, more than I really wanted to do I just wanted to you know I just wanted to set something and you know dump something into it and uh, uh, you know to program the um, uh, to program the chip and just get an output of it and see see you know how well uh, uh, you know how accurate it was if it was going to work for my purposes so uh it seems fairly good um what i've got here is um you know update rates pretty slow because it's usb to a you know ds1102 i couldn't get any of my 2000 series scopes to work for some reason so but this one works and it works for what i it, it will work for what i'm i'm doing here so i've got um my uh, signal generator here is set for um, one megahertz even, um, and the uh, it's uh, it's that Marconi that I've probably done in a video in the past, and um, you know I've got a cal on it, and um, it's being um, uh, its reference is uh, it didn't make any difference anyway. Uh, is a rubidium standard, some 10 megahertz uh, rubidium into it. Um, so I know this thing is, you know, a hell of a lot more spot on than, um, than this 809833 is, but, you know, we're talking about something, a, a digital, a digital synthesis, you know, with a, uh, you know, reference crystal that's, you know, one of these guys right here. We have no, I have no frigging clue how accurate it is. Uh, 50 PPM. I actually think it's worse than that, but, um, if I had to guess, it's probably at least, 200 ppm but you know they say 50 and i don't i don't believe it at all it it's very drifty so um that said um you know but it works um it's it's fairly good so um you know you can see it um uh, it's not uh it's not lining up it's just drifting around um so anyway my um my thought for this thing is um I wanted to get a, um, uh, I'm probably going to get one of the uh, 9850s to play with. Um, and uh, I'm just, you know, have a look on eBay just for these cheap boards, just to, something I could throw on a breadboard and fool around with. Uh, mostly because, you know, I could get the chip from DigiKey and throw it on an adapter board and all that kind of stuff. But these are already made and I already got, you know, it's already got a, you know, a, got, a, got a crystal, you know, a clock and it's all the support components are on there. And I just assume, um, you know, get one of these and move on. Um, I noticed that the uh, 9850s don't have any um, uh, proper RF connector on them. Um, it sort of um, mystifies me. Um uh, there's, there's some of them that do, you know, like this one does, but it's also like a, you know, a, uh, a whole project, um, you know, so, um, and you got this one down here, um, so I don't know, it's, uh, it just seems all very interesting to me that, um, you know, at least that they're just, um, you know, the way they are, so, 
I guess it doesn't matter. I'll get one of these, you know, breadboard friendly ones and we'll just see, um, you know, how well it works. If I can get it going. Uh, code should probably be fairly similar from the uh, 9833 to 9850 to, uh, you know, I should be able to use this, most of this code to, I uh, don't need to see that, uh, to, to talk to this one and just see how, um, how stable this one is. Um, so, um, yeah, this fella, thanks to him, just I didn't have to sit here for a couple hours and write all this code. Uh, is a data sheet for the uh, 9833 that I was looking at because uh, I was having an issue with the initialization because of the the clock issue, but um, you know, got that sorted out. Now, um, the uh, other interesting thing about these uh, 9833s, uh, let's find a good picture of it. Is um, see if this one's yeah. Is it's got this. Uh, digital potentiometer, which is this uh, MCP41, um, you know, it's I, I don't I didn't really understand, um, you know, what's going on, uh, and why, um, you know, why we seem to um, to have this thing here. So that's what that's what this uh, this guy is right over here, up in the upper uh, upper left. And then we got like a little amplifier and, and such, and uh, I, I I was just mystified by that, but I didn't care about it. So I said uh, I don't care about it right now. I'll just probe the output of the uh, the chip um, so that I can uh, you know see what's going on. Um, and I was having issue with uh, the signal level coming out of the uh, SMA connector on the board. It's just uh, you know it was it was fairly small, and it turns out it's because it's digital potentiometer. So um, you know, I mean, for, but but it it's working for the moment. Um, I just bridged across it and move on. So um, anyway, um, it presumably can be programmed. But that's the thing about this thing is, is it's this is only really going to work. You know, 12 megahertz is what the um, the uh, 9833 is capable of. But that digital potentiometer is going to um, going to cause you issues at higher frequencies. It's probably not going to go much over a megahertz at best. So um, I, don't, I don't know why it's there, really. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, but, you know, you can't really complain uh, when you're talking about something that, uh, you know, it costs uh, uh, $9.21. So um, not really uh, too miffed about that at all. You know, it works. So um, anyway, so um, in... Um, in the code here, um, I can pretty much just, uh, you know, set a frequency value like that. So if I want to set to, um, you know, uh, 100 kilohertz, I just, you know, go in and push that, just turn off the, uh, let's just turn off channel 2 and uh, move on with that. So there's uh, 100 kilohertz. Uh, channel 2, are you going to turn off? Sometime today. I think. There we go. So we got a hundred. Uh, we got a hundred kilohertz. It's sort of bouncing around, um, and it's stabilized. Um, so you know, it's it's reasonably um, uh, it's reasonably good. I've actually uh, you know really can't complain about that. Um, considering you know I can go over here and probably do something. It says um, uh, ninety nine point nine nine eighty eight. So I can probably go over there and do. Um, something like this and um, probably bring it in at least with the scope so or, or not <laughs> um, that's interesting um, I thought that, uh, that I could change that I'll just push it again just to make sure um, oh maybe I guess it just didn't uh, it didn't flash or it didn't initialize properly. Still having some initialization problems with it, I think. And now all of a sudden it's um, it, it's over. So that's rather peculiar, uh, right there in itself. So, um, but yeah, you could pretty much dial in whatever frequency you want, um, you know, within reason, uh, and um, you know, and it, and it will work. So. Um, and that's kind of peculiar because uh, I, I really have to wonder about the frequency counter in this in this Rigel scope. You know how um, how good it is. 
Um, I probably need to go and get a uh, a standalone uh, counter on and throw it on there just so that I can see what's going on with it because I'm not entirely sure about this counter. Um, I've had this 1102 forever. Um, the thing probably needs to be calibrated. So, you know, I just wouldn't be surprised if that's really all it boils down to. It just needs to be calibrated. Um, I've got the, uh, the 2000 series that I've again i can't get this ultra scope stuff to work with it so i could display it on the screen which would be kind of cool uh to do that uh and this is actually kind of cool uh because i could sit here and uh and you know potentially here in the future not not with the the video feedback thing going on but uh uh you know show stuff that's going on in the circuit and uh you know in relation to what i'm doing in the code um so um that part of it's pretty cool uh in itself so um I just set this to 10 megahertz and see what it does um that's pretty pretty much where the signal just you know dies off oh nope that's one megahertz i need another zero um it, it just it just dies and it's a digital potentiometer that's uh that sucks it up it's just it's there if i get this if i get the probe out and uh, disconnect the um uh the, the 50 ohm uh uh I just got a piece of um, RG58 coax, you know, B and C, and uh, on the other end of the scope, by the scope, this is 50 ohm termination um, in the channel one. Um, you see that it, it pretty much it's gone. But if I put the probe, if I pull that out and I actually go and probe uh, at the chip, I'll, I'll, I will have the 10 megahertz there. It's the, um, uh, it's this, um, uh, this thing over here, there's something going on over here that's still that I haven't really, you know, managed completely successfully jumper it out to, um, uh, you know, take these uh, this little amplifier and this digital potentiometer out that's, that's sort of attenuating it to, at higher frequencies is just drowning it down, drowning it out. So it's you don't see anything here, but uh, uh, trust me, there is output from it, um, and it seems to show up. Um, Somewhere around, I think it's maybe six megahertz um, that uh, that you start to see it again, um, you know, very faintly. Yeah, so um, you know, five megahertz, uh, six megahertz. Um, somewhere around here, it pretty much uh, it, it just disappears. It's seven megahertz, six, seven megahertz. It this is it's pretty much you know gone at this point. This is so little signal. Uh, it's being attenuated by uh, by those other components. Um, so um, my thought is, and this is uh, one of those crazy uh, crazy ideas of just disconnect from the scope uh, and close this thing up. I don't want to save anything. And uh, I know I got my Cobra 148 schematic here. And um, my thought here is this is a redrawn uh, 148. Uh, and um, come on, let's zoom in here thing. And we'll look at the PLL on this guy. So this is our uh, divider and our channel selector. And we've got um, uh, six bits. Um, with the seven bit unused, so uh, six bits, uh, 64 common, uh, 64 uh, possible uh, uh, divisions, and uh, seven bits is obviously 120 possible uh, divisions, uh, or essentially uh, 10 kilohertz channels. So um, the thought is, what happens if I took um, the PLL and all this stuff, and um, the um, uh, the VCO and stuffed this DDS right here? If I stuff the 34, one of those 50 megahertz uh, uh, deals, the um, the 9850, um, and this is, you know, again, this is just is just sort of a a thought. I take the one of these 9850s and um, they go up to 40 megahertz. I need, um, you know, 34 and change. So I'm at the top end of uh, of the range of this, but you know, it should still work satisfactorily. I'm just wondering if I stuffed it in here, hooked it up to, uh, you know, with my microcontroller, uh, with my other project and, you know, integrated all that stuff. And then uh, taken out this uh, 11 megahertz uh, stuff here, take out the voice lock, make this a, um, uh, uh, you know, an encoder. Um, 
and uh, just uh, you know vary uh, vary the frequency here out of the VCO, and then uh, boom, uh, replace the uh, the entire PLL of this thing, and then I can go wherever I want. I don't know. It's kind of a crazy thought, and somebody's gonna. I know somebody's probably thinking that watch this. Why uh, why would you do that? Well, why not? It's just sort of me fooling around. This is a hobby project. I don't think it will work, but I'm going to give it a go. So anyways, if anybody has any thoughts or if anybody is interested in seeing what happens uh, if I was to take a uh, 809850 and stuff the output uh, right into, uh, into the radio here, um, you know, cutting out all of this and see what happens, um, be my guest. Uh, I think that I'll um, I'll have issues with it. I'll probably have to put there probably have to be some filtering uh, on the outputs of this thing. So anyway, um, if anybody's interesting or or in, interested in uh, in seeing that, uh, let me know. Maybe I'll uh, I'll make it happen faster. But in the meantime, I'll probably um, you know get a jump on it and uh, and get one of these. Uh, get one of these boards uh you know on the way because it takes you know two three weeks from china to get here anyway so um you know the earliest i'm looking at is you know probably uh well to february before i would even get it so um you know anyways if uh if anybody wants to see it uh you know give me a holler and uh you know maybe i'll uh I'll make it happen. And if it works, that will be really interesting because then it will be, uh, let's take out the whole uh, PLL of a, uh, of a CV and, um, uh, you know, and really get some, um, try, you know, get some uh, frequency range, uh, you know, some broadbanding out of the sucker. Because, I mean, as it stands right now, the, um, uh, the range of this PLL is determined by this oscillator right here. Um, and the thought was, my first thought is, that I would just stuff it, you know, in here someplace, not, you know, and, and, and just, uh, you know, leave, um, maybe leave the tripler in place and, uh, and take this, um, this, this guy. And I still could do that. I could stuff this into it. The signal's so weak, but I have to, I have to finish cutting out that, um, uh, digital potentiometer and then just stuff it into the, uh, into this loop oscillator and then, um, you know, just, you know, pro, let it proceed on through. But I'm not an RF guy by rule, you know, by trade. So um, it's not my thing. I'm just tinkering, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. And, uh, you know, talking to the, talking to the, um, uh, talking binary to a, um, uh, to a, to a divider is, you know, child's play. It's easy stuff. Um, but mucking around in here, I understand what the circuit's doing and I, I get it completely. You know, we got some varactive diodes in here and we got this, uh, inductor and this varactor right here. And all we're doing is pulling this thing around. Um, we got the, uh, transmit frequency, we got the receive or voice lock. Um, when, when this is unlocked so that it does transmit or receive, you pretty much, you know, take this diode out, jumper over it, cut these diodes loose. Um, and then take this, um. Uh, line up here that goes to the receive only eight volts um, right here, and um, you just put that to a constant eight volts, and then this does uh, transmit and receive. Um, so, you know that's that's essentially all you're doing when you um, when you change this uh, you change the circuit around. Um, and uh, yeah, you could probably I know you could fool around with here, put more inductors, more capacitors, things like this, so, to, so that you can pull this thing around a little bit more. Um, you get a 10 turn pot over here and put it there. But imagine if you didn't have to have a 10 turn pot here, if, um, you had a, uh, a DDS like this, um, and you could vary the, uh, uh the frequency steps in one at, at, at one Hertz. I mean, that would be, um, that would be great. Um, and we're talking about that on a 30, 35 plus year old radio. So anyway, um, hope that was interesting. Um, if not, sorry. Um, but I'm going to give it a go, see what happens. So anyway, guys, until next time.